Hey guys, it's me again, Zoe, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about the NMAT and the breakdown of the coverage of the NMAT. So, the National Medical Admission Test is a standardized test that is designed for incoming medical students or those who want to apply to study for medicine. So, the results of this exam is actually a requirement when you're applying for different medical schools. In fact, uh, different medical schools all over the Philippines have a certain or a specific percentile score that you need to achieve if you want to be eligible to apply to their medical school. So in other words, it's a very important exam if you want to study medicine in the Philippines. Alright, so now let's talk about the exam itself. The NMAT has two parts. The first part usually tests your basic skills and while the second part tests mostly your knowledge in the different sciences. because They want to see if you have the academic background that is necessary if you want to study medicine. So they want to see if you're actually prepared to study everything related to med. Alright, so now let's get down to different breakdowns for each part. Alright, part one of the exam has four different subsets. To take the whole part of the exam, it usually takes about three hours. So it's actually up to you how you allot your time in the different parts of the exam. You can choose to spend more times in different parts of the exam, but you should take note that all the four subsets are all 40 items each and there is a suggested time allotment but you do not need to follow it it's all up to you how much you want to spend time in a certain part all right so the suggested time allotment for the different parts is for the verbal part you're actually suggested to take about 40 minutes and for the inductive reasoning 50 minutes for quantitative 50 minutes and for perceptual acuity that's 40 minutes so that's a total of three hours for the first part of the exam all right so you may be like wondering oh what do these words actually mean what what's the breakdown zoe all right so now i'll get to the breakdown i'm sorry if i'm talking too fast all right the verbal subset this consists of word analogies and reading comprehension types of questions this test will usually measure your verbal reasoning your inferential and your analytical skills so in word analogy, it's actually testing if you're good at determining relationships between words, like is it a synonym, antonym, th thesaurus, sorry, whoops, I'm running out of words. Anyway, are they related to one another or what's their sequence? Like, let me give you an example. For example, let's say that the question shows hog is to sow as buck is to, then you'll look at the choices. Obviously, you know, hog is like a male boar or a male pig and so is a female pig. And then they show you buck, which is a male deer. So now you have to look for the choices, which shows you a female deer. For the reading comprehension part of the exam, this part you don't really need to worry that much because uh, you don't really need to have any background knowledge in anything. You just have to be good at uh, reading and understanding. Actually, sometimes you don't even need to read the whole passage. If you actually just read the title and the questions, you can answer some questions already. So you can already like answer it without even reading the whole thing and that saves you a lot of time. And time is the essence in this exam. <laughs> All right, so now let's talk about the second part of part one, which is inductive reasoning. So inductive reasoning usually contains um, figure series, figure grouping, and number and letter series. So in this part of the exam, they want to test your ability to perceive relationships and establish a logical conclusion. And a tip for this part of the exam that I can actually suggest to you is to write down the alphabet already on your scratch paper. Because uh, in the part of the exam, usually it would take you time to... Well, for me, I would sing the alphabet in my head to figure out which letter comes next. But if you have it all written down in the paper, you don't have to waste time thinking about the letter anymore. You'd already see it. And it's easier for you to like jump in relationships with one another if you see it on the paper. And also, for this part, I really suggest that you start familiarizing yourself with different types of series. Like, what are the letters of the month? What are the letters of the week? Um, odd, even, multiples. You have to like be able to quickly identify, oh, that's the relationship with this one, or oh, these are multiples of two, oh, it's plus two, minus two, plus two, minus two. You have to be really, 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 really quick in establishing these relationships, and you can do that through practice. And you have so many resources available to practice this. For the third por portion of the first part of the exam, this is quantitative. So now this is basically math. It contains fundamental operations, addition, subtractions, etc., uh, problem solving, and data interpretation. So data interpretation, you don't have to worry about that too much because it's all graphs and that's kind of easy. 
and actually something really you need to consider is that a lot of people score low in this part of the exam so if you want to boost your percentile score you may want to focus on math i know that math is not something we biology majors love some do like my friend he's crazy good at math but you really really need to focus on this part so some tips that i have is to actually start working more familiarize yourself with working with factors factorials decimals learn the shortcuts in solving and make sure that you know the different types of word problems like work rate etc because it will really really be helpful that if you can identify the type of problem you're seeing you'd know the course of action to take on how to solve it already so for the fourth part of the first part of the exam is perceptual acuity. So this part can be very, very challenging. It contains a lot of hidden finger, sorry, hidden figures, mirror images, identical information types of tests. So it really tests your ability to recognize your similarities or differences in pictures, your ability to identify them right away, even if there are so many complications or distractions on the piece of paper. In fact, it can be really challenging because sometimes if they ask you to look for a hidden figure, let's say it's like a weird trapezoidal shape, you'd be looking for it on the different choices as this in this form but then apparently they flipped it all around and you're like looking for the wrong thing so you have to really be able to see everything in different angles you will be turning your book a lot so a tip and suggestion that i can give is to actually have an eraser that's cut to four pieces so small four pieces so you can use them to eliminate your choices because in this exam you're not allowed to write on the booklet so this is one of the techniques you can use so that you can already remove the distractions so placing the eraser and removing them from the choices. It's really hard to practice for this. It's just you you just have to really be faster in identifying differences, I guess. I mean, I had a low score in this part of the exam because I got too lazy to actually look for differences because there's a part where um, you're actually supposed to look for the same paragraph as each other. And sometimes the difference is just a comma instead of a period or like, the small letter I becomes a letter L and you're like, what, that was the only change? It was so hard to see that. So this really tests your quick eyes. And I think that's something that will be important as a doctor. You're supposed to be able to notice differences right away. And that's something I need to work on. <laughs> now let's go to part two of the exam. So part two of the exam is a bit shorter. It only lasts for two hours and 30 minutes. And all the different parts of the subset will take will have 50 items. So the suggested time allotment for the following items is 35 minutes for biology, 40 minutes for physics, 35 minutes for sociology, and 40 minutes for chemistry. Yikes, right? 50 items and then you have less time. But it is actually possible because some of the questions are quick recall questions. So now let's talk about each of the different parts. So the topics for biology, which usually contains um, unity and diversity in life, cells and cellular processes, genetics, and the, word, the world of plants and animals, development, life processes, homeostasis, organisms, and the environment, so ecology. And for me, I think this part of the exam is hard to study for. I mean, if you study all of these topics, it will take you like a long time. So I really think you need to rely on your stuff knowledge here. And then this is something that you just review quickly because I studied for it. And a lot of the things I studied for didn't come out there. Like when it was actually the exam itself, I was like, what? It's about poisons? I didn't study poisons. And um, so yeah, you really can't tell what's gonna show up and it's harder to study for a bigger coverage. So I think one part of this part of biology that you can focus on is genetics because a lot of the exams will contain pedigrees. So you should be able to analyze pedigree charts really well. And at least, yeah, know the basics of homeostasis and relationships and actually just studying the um, reviewers. They usually um, summarize the need to knows really, really well. So the next part is physics. So the topics for physics is mechanics, thermodynamics, vibrations, wave, optics, electricity and magnetism, and modern physics. I believe studying for physics is more feasible compared to biology because here you can actually memorize formulas and it's more like of a skill. It's more of problem solving and understanding concepts. So I think many of the questions in the NMAT actually were very similar to the practice exam of CEM in physics. So if you study those questions and learn how to solve them on your own, like 
really rationalize the question how to solve this how to solve that then you'll really do better in physics and physics is also another subject that people get lower scores in the NMAT percentile so if you get a high score here I also believe it will boost your exam scores so really really practice and really familiarize yourself with all the formulas and understand the formula like I don't know if that makes sense. So now let's talk about uh, social science. So what sociology contains, it had, uh, sorry, what social science contains is sociology, <laughs> anthropology, and psychology. So you don't have to worry too much because a lot of these are just recall questions that are like basic. So it's mostly asking you who's the philosopher of this and who thought about this, who's what's an ubermensch and all of those stuff. So. A lot of it can be studied through reading different reviewers and I actually found a really really good source online that summarized psych really well that into only like 20 plus pages I think and if you guys want a copy of what I used to review psych uh, just comment down below and I'll share the link so now let's go to the last part of the exam and that is chemistry <laughs> all right so for the topics for chemistry it's general chemistry analytical chemistry organic chemistry and biochemistry <gasps> overwhelming right but it's actually manageable because similar to physics chemistry was actually very similar to the CEM practice test as well so you have to familiarize yourself with the different gas laws be good at stoichiometry and the analytical chemistry questions that are in CEM are were very similar I was surprised to the exam itself so don't just don't memorize the questions because they're obviously not gonna ask the same questions but you should understand how to solve them yourself and why the answers is like this so really rationalize those chemical questions and besides solving they're also gonna ask like recall questions like um, what is a part of what makes a lipid a lipid or what makes a DNA different from RNA so these are like some questions in biochemistry that you need to really understand so the recall stuff and yeah again if you focus on this part of the exam it will also really boost your NMAT score because a lot of people also score low here and why do I keep saying boost your NMAT score compared to other people because the NMAT will actually compare your score to the other takers so it's not just like did you pass the exam or not it's more like how was your score compared to other people's score? So that's what makes it really, really challenging because it doesn't matter how right or how wrong you are, it just matters how much your score is higher than others. At least that's how I understood it. And yeah, if you guys want to know more tips or you have more questions about the NMAT, just ask me and I'll be happy to share and make another video about it if you guys really want. All right, nice talking or chatting with you guys again. And now I'm rambling. All right, bye. Don't forget to subscribe.